Today, me and my dad are putting up the goat fence for the winter. We are gathering posts to put up for a fence post for the goat pen. So here's my pile to pick from. Um, I got white oak. Um, most everything in here is white oak, so I'm gonna pick some smaller ones out of here. I think I have some tamarack laying around somewhere, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe that's right. Maybe that's this pile. Looks like, yeah, this looks like tamarack, and it's actually, it's been here at least a year, so it's peeling pretty good right now. So maybe I'll go with a couple little pieces of tamarack, and we'll see what I can get out and get into the back of my truck. I grabbed three gloves. Look at them. They're all the same hand. <laughs> Give me that smile. All right, go pick out the best looking oak post Is this oak? that we have. This is all oak, yep. We need it to be straight and big. Oh. Find the straightest and the biggest. That doesn't even straight. This one right here. Straightest and the biggest. The green... and it's not the biggest. Big. But it'll fit in the hole? Yeah. Alright. Biggest. So I dug two holes for the wooden part here to put the f fence poles to hold it. Fence poles in. And we're, we're gonna put them in and put these bo board on them so it's a fence. Try it. I have no doubts that you can't. <laughs> he obviously wasn't able to drive. He wasn't in drive! I was kidding, back. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna pull it out of the back. Go ahead. Now we're gonna go and push all the poles down inside the hole. Do you wanna show them the poles you got up? Yeah. This one? I think it can go down a little bit? Yeah. Okay. This one maybe? Yeah, well. Not this one. Oh, that one will just have to, what should we do to get that one up straight? That up straight? No. What should we get to put it up straight, do you think? Yep. And how do we know it's straight? With Level. a... So we got the posts up. Now we're going to tamp them down and pound them in as much as we can. I found my left-hand glove. We're hooking up a high tensile part of the fence today. How many strands do you think we're going to do? I think we should do four. We should do at least four, maybe five. Okay, so we're going to take the end. Yep, this is as low as we can go. Here, tell them. We set up this test piece. It's just regular um, electric fencing. So we set that up as low as we can go to make it through the trail. And now we're going to start at the top level and work our way down. Alright, let's go show them. So this 
is the tightener. And there's a tool that you hook around there to pull it tight. So what we have to do is put one end to that little hole right there. Can't tell where the camera's at. To that little hole right there. Do you wanna go look and see? Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay, don't touch it though. Come closer a little bit. You gotta put put it through that hole right there, and then it wraps around the fence. Keep going. And then right inside there is a little hole and the long piece goes through there. We twist it around and then we're able to pull this and tighten it. So I just got back from um, the orthodontist appointment with Sydney. She got her braces off finally. And um, Owen and Beck were working on the new goat fencing for their winter um, paddock, pasture area. And so um, he's just bringing me out now to show it to me. Looks good. It does. We have to tighten this one up, bring it up a little bit. Yep. I got a new bar. Yeah, but got a new tip for my chainsaw so I can, you so you run can it cut again. those yeah. off. So I can cut everything down. Oh, I too. see the. Yeah, it's touching. The stumps in there. Yeah, and it's touching that one right next to the telephone pole, the bottom one is. Okay. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that. Well, we could just raise it, right? Yeah, right there. Work, but then it'll be at an angle. But we'll figure that out. Couldn't you just. I could just put a piece of, piece of plastic on it. Yeah, we could cut this, yeah, cut that right, right there, yep. and move it down. So over here, it's over here. Your one board didn't reach, so I went and found two. Oh, okay. Ones. Yep, perfect. Yeah, because then they can't get through that. Yep. I hope. I hope. This is. They might get through this one. Yeah. But we can adjust the. We only have one screw in each one right now. Okay. So we can move them around because this is probably too low. Yeah. This could come up and then this could come up. Yep, that's probably what we'll have to do. But if you go up any further, you're going to oh, have to put it on the other that's side true. and that's too high. We can raise it just a little bit. I don't have it all the way tight yet, you so we can still move it. Put that here and then put that one above the, mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, I'll probably do it down. Kind of like this right here. It's probably too low. We can lower this a little bit too because they're not going to finish. Should I do venison or hamburger? Or lamb? One of each. Looks nice. When Beck and I were digging these holes, um, the problem we had is that this area right here has big, huge river stones. It must have been like a patio or something. When we bought this place, you couldn't even see this end of the building. Um, it was all grown up with trees and brush and everything. We didn't realize there was a door opening here. So um, we've really come a long ways, but with that said, um, we still have to worry about or work with what what we have and so the quickest way that we could get this done was to scoot the post over to the edge of the um, the river stone because I mean they're massive and they're like a couple hundred pounds so we um, found the edge of that one and we put the post in right here and then we just scooted the fence boards down so that the goats can't get out because they would get out that hole. Um, and so it provides enough support that they can't here. Um, but then this provides the bracing for this and makes it so that we can get in and out that door easy without getting shocked because when we're hauling things in and out that door, I don't want to worry about the electric fence. So our fence posts look kind of funny. Um, 
Owen is a logger, or he was a logger. Um, he quit logging full time um, this summer so that he could be home a little bit more and it wasn't so dangerous. There's all sorts of reasons. He has a different job that he got um, a year and a half ago now and he works there for 12 hour days um, and then he was logging Mondays and Tuesdays in addition to that and so this summer we've finally gotten to the point where he can be home Mondays and Tuesdays. So knowing that we are doing all these fence projects um, he would um, go on jobs when they had scraps. If they had white oak or tamarack, he would um, save what he could for fence posts. So we have all sorts of different lengths. We have like probably six to eight feet of like the stuff that's too small to sell. And um, then we also have a whole bunch here from our property. So we are able to use those here as fence posts and um, they're really good quality. They're really, really, like we have those in pasture too and they're so hard to nail into. Um, it's a great fence post. So that is a very easy way for us to save thousands of dollars with everything that we have to do and um, get, get the fencing put up that we need to. Now the, um, the boards there, the, the, for the wooden parts of this fence, are from that deck that we salvaged from Owen's parents' house um, earlier this summer. So we're starting now to build the fences that we were planning on building. Um, originally I was going to have this whole thing be wooden fence and then that way we wouldn't have to run a hot wire from the existing hot wire which is across this paddock. But because we're running out of time, the winter's going to be here soon, um, we're doing what's going to be the quickest and since we're running this through um, a massive lilac bush um, this is going to be the easiest and it's also going to be the most guaranteed way to keep our goats in because they're like 200 pounds. So um, we want to go with something that's going to be strong and heavy duty and if we need to put cows in here in the future we can. Can I show you a trick? Too bad Beck wasn't here to show me how to do it. <laughs> yep. Do you have a wrench? I don't. That's why I was trying to see. Um, how about the turner for the fence? I got that. Stick that on there. There you go. So I bought the bolts to put in for the post um, be, and they were out of gates. We need to buy actually two of them and they were out and so we're just using this six foot one which actually goes over there um, in the second pasture in the corner on the other side of that shed. Um, and so we, since no cows are in there right now, um, we took it off so that we can get the goats in here. So it's going to overhang by like two feet, two and a half feet over there. So we're just going to attach it so the goats can't push out. Attach it on the side of the milk house there. But um, this will allow us to get the goats in here sooner until the gates come in. And then my plan is, and I don't know if we're going to get it done this winter, but I would like to is kind of where the dogs are wrestling, right in there. I'd like to put another post and then put a wood fence from here to that post um, and then put another small gate right at the end of this sidewalk here. And then that way it'll allow us to get in here easy without um, having to worry about the goats getting out. And um, it would allow us one more way to get in there. I would like to um, have have the boards here on this space so that we can actually put um, two or three feeders and have dividers in them and then hang the feeders on the outside um, so that they stick their head through and eat. And then it would be super easy for us to go in and just feed. And that would make um, going on vacation a lot easier for people. And 
Um, it also would make it easier for us so that um, when the goats get really pushy, like they sometimes do, um, they don't get out as easy. They actually would be contained by the second gate. So, um, it seems a little goofy, you know, that we have such a big gate, but in all actuality, we'll only use this gate because we have access from inside the barn. Um, we never put a gate in on the other high tensile fence on the opposite side of this. So we actually will only use this gate until we get our little or our smaller one that fits for that. We'll only use it to get the goats from their current summer pen into this pen. So it, it really is just a quick temporary fix so that we can get them out of there. It's getting mucky, it's getting wet, they have it eaten down. So um, we might as well make life a little bit easier and move them here where it's nice and dry and um, make life, make chores at night, especially now with it getting cold, so much easier. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We're going to um, go in and celebrate Sydney getting her braces off, eat some nachos for supper, and um, hopefully tomorrow we will get this finished. We have to tighten up the high tensile. We have to finish securing the bracket on the gate and get the chain so that it can be secured shut and hook it up to the fencer, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, we should be able to get this up and running fairly quick and easy tomorrow. Um, but that's it for today. We're going to end this video here and we will um, give you an update once the goats are in and we will um, show you how much they love it because I know that they're going to be happy to be back here. Thanks for tuning in guys and we will see you on the next video. Uh, we would love it if you would subscribe to our videos and follow along with what we're doing with this old dairy farm that we bought a few years ago and um, watch as our family kind of transforms it into a pumpkin patch and Christmas tree farm. See you guys next time.